Children's Grief Awareness Day is always the third Thursday in November. This year it falls on November 15th, and it was a day created to recognize children as grievers in their own right and also give adults ways to support them through their grief. So children tend to grieve differently than adults. One important thing to remember is that no child is alike, therefore no child's grief journey is going to be alike. And also children tend to show rather than tell their grief. In my experience working with children and teens, the thing that I hear the most from them is that they want to be heard and validated in what they're experiencing. So I'd say it's less about saying the right thing and more about showing that you're there for them and you're going to walk with them through what they're experiencing. A lot of children and teens talk about how they want to talk about the person that they miss. So if you're looking for a place to start, start by asking them about the person that they're missing, sharing a special memory or something that was important to them. That's what they have to hold on to and that's what they want to share about. Grief is ongoing. There's no right or wrong way to grieve or no right or wrong length of time for a child or an adult to grieve. Each person's grief experience is unique to them. It's also helpful to think of the grief process as having emotions, thoughts, bodily sensations, and behaviors. It's important to remember as caregivers that this is their first grief experience, and like you, they may also not be sure how to grieve. Because the grief experience uh, involves emotions, thoughts, bodily sensations, and behaviors, one of the things that uh, we'd like to focus on or that we hear most often from parents and caregivers are the behaviors that children are experiencing. Some of those include withdrawal from friends and family, crying and crying unexpectedly, anger and angry outbursts, lack of uh, focus, maybe their grades drop, um, they don't seem as interested or care about things that they used to, and anxiety and worry and fear. Many of these behaviors become of concern to parents and caregivers as a child is grieving. Um, what's important for, for parents and caregivers to know or to understand is that listening or witnessing and hearing your child or teen's story and what they're struggling with, that's when they feel the most supported. As a parent or caregiver, you know your child or teen best. If you are hearing from teachers or you're noticing that some of the behaviors I listed are severe or increase or lasting longer than you're comfortable with, it's time to give us a call for extra support and resources.